Our ability to create technology is always faster than our ability to generate the wisdom to use it correctly. And I think this is something that, you know, you can talk about atomic bombs or, you know, whatever, uh, nuclear re reactors, you can talk about all kinds of technology and really see that we have to have new technology rolling out with an equal dose of care and analysis of ethics and other important considerations. And I think biotech was a good example of how it really did have that complimentary discussion, I think at least in academic circles. The problem is, is that nobody folded in John Q. Public to ask them, how do you feel about this? And what do you know about it? And how can we better communicate what the reality of the risk is versus the reality of the, of the promise? Mm -hmm. I think there's also some risk as well as we start to mass produce more quantities, just having less biodiversity overall. If every species of corn or banana on the planet is the same, you run into, you run into the plague phenomena. Yeah, and I think we've seen that bottleneck behind us now. What's really interesting about that is that when you look at everything, if, and, and when people talk about biodiversity and monocultures, this kind of thing. Uh, the first thing they go to is, well, look at the corn across Iowa and how it's all one big monoculture. I think that's really not how I see it as a scientist, that as a plant scientist, I see our most extensive monocultures as things like bananas or um, grapes. You know, grapes, we've been using the same varieties, especially for wine, um, for a long time. And uh, the people in the wine world don't want to violate that monoculture. They want the same thing over and over again and reproducible and uh, predictable. Uh, when you look at corn and soybeans and some of our big ag crops, it's actually been a uh, bottleneck that we've weaseled through because of this genomics explosion. Because we can use these widespread DNA tools to understand all the genes in a plant we can start to go to wild populations and find genes that are associated with things like disease resistance or um, ability to grow through drought or stress because those wild plants do it without anybody's help. And they're repositories of tons of genes that if we could bring those into production varieties um, could give us better and better quality. And I think that we're starting to see that uh, the advent of that reality open up. And it's really exciting to see that the next generation of crops could be bringing in uh, genetics from the wild species and, and lending those uh, wild genes to make our new crops more diverse and um, better in terms of production and more sustainable overall. But there are, there are children alive today. Um, because of gene editing, where they've had their leukemia resolved in, in ways that they couldn't have done before, um, by genetically engineered cells that were introduced to their bodies that, like a, uh, like a guided missile, went to the cancer and destroyed it. Um, this is reality. And this is uh, something that I see as being, you know, I think before we get to, you know, stronger, faster, sexier, um, I think we're going to see a lot more of those medical applications that will change the lives for people. Where are we going to be five, 10, 15 years? What's the mind blowing stuff that most people don't know about? Yeah. So the, you know, and this is what's, I think the big deal is in gene editing and our ability to um, make surgical changes to DNA in very rapid ways to create new traits. And I think what you're going to see are a couple of things. One, uh, like I mentioned before, we know the genes that, give plants resilience and give plants disease resistance in the wild. And you just, uh, maybe we understand it from something like barley, but it, that same change doesn't exist in wheat. We can now create that change in wheat to make it resist a certain disease. That's really new. That's really happening. And that's going to be going on. Um, in plant biology, the other exciting thing is, can we take a wild plant, like a tomato, like a wild tomato, which is, you know, uh, economically horticulturally useless, and introduce the same dozen changes that we see led to the domesticated tomato. And so that way, it's keeping all of those wild genes while only changing the ones that make it good for consumers. Uh, the other place that I think you'll see some really stunning stuff is in the idea of conservation, in the area of conservation, and maybe even de-extinction. Can we bring back uh, things that are either lost or maybe um, uh, on the edge of being lost, 
by being able to give them a few traits to help them along. And I think these are really amazing places where you'll see some important changes in the future. Oh. One last question. If you had to leave people with something, a quote, a call to action, et cetera, what would it be and why? Wow. Um, that's a tough one. I think that uh, a, a call to action should be, um, I would like to see people investing more in other people and in bigger ideas and community ideas. And, uh, you know, the, that, my my personal interest is how do I leave this rock a little better than I found it? And I think learning about the realities, learning who to trust about information about science is so important. And in a day of the internet and the noise in the internet and predatory publishing, that's very hard to do. But I would urge people to really seek the experts and and pay attention to the consensus. And let's make really good decisions that can benefit people and the planet. 